The 2009 construction season is set to be one of the most intense and longest lasting construction seasons in recent history. I'm standing in the I-90 reversible express lanes. This is the site of one of the highest impact projects drivers will see all summer long. For 19 days in May, we're shutting down this stretch of roadway to replace these expansion joints that help the bridge go up and down with the water. Fast forward to July, we shut down the westbound outer roadway for 23 days to replace those expansion joints. To make this happen, we need at least 20% of drivers from Mercer Island and 40% of drivers coming from Issaquah and Bellevue to find another way to work. Take an alternate route. This is a great time to join a van pool or find a carpool buddy. Now's the time to be planning ahead for these lengthy closures coming your way very soon. Now that we're under the bridge, you can see the cracked expansion joints. These joints let the bridge bend and move with the wind, waves, and traffic. There are four of them in these bridges. Two in the express lanes and two on the main line. The small ones weigh 40 tons and the big ones weigh 65 tons. They're all cracking underneath. Here you can see where our crews have welded them back together year after year after year. If we let this cracking go, they could possibly pop up and your vehicle could slam into them at 50 miles an hour. To remove the old joints and install the new joints, first we have to take the old joints out of the bridge. They're actually part of the bridge, cemented in. So crews will have to break out the joints in pieces, and remove all the surrounding concrete. Once those old joints are removed, we'll bring in the new joints by a barge, use a crane to drop them into place, and pour new cement around them to uh, make them a, essentially a part of the bridge again. This is why we need three weeks of closures in May and July to get this work done, because uh, this is not a simple task. Well, as it is already, we see a lot of impact on 90 as drivers get from Issaquah. Uh, and in towards 4.05 in the mornings to begin with. So I would anticipate that's going to get even worse. We'll see bigger backups on 90 uh, leading in towards 4.05 and then out across the water. And 90 is usually our, kind of like our safe zone where uh, 5.20 takes all the beating and 90 is usually good. So we're going to start seeing the impact there. But also then 4.05 in both directions really going to be stacking up pretty heavy getting in towards 90 as well, especially when we lose those express lanes at first. Anytime we take away those lanes, even when we add lanes too, for some reason, that causes backups for folks. Uh, so I would anticipate some pretty sizable delays again, both directions of 4.05 leading into 90 and then also heavier delays getting out of Issaquah by far. So the bottom line is no matter where you live in the Puget Sound, even though it just affects I-90, this mm -hmm. is going to have far-reaching effects. Indeed, yeah, stretching into 405. Also, I would imagine because we'll see more impact on 405, you might see more people flooding onto some of the surface streets. Also seeing uh, seeing some of the traffic on I-5 also being affected leading up into Seattle as people try and get around this whole 405 mess. So uh, yeah, one little road, big impact. It's kind of the whole butterfly effect. Biking to work might be the best way to commute around during the July closure. Even though we're closing the westbound main line and parts of the bike path between July 5th and July 28th, we are building a temporary bridge for bikers and pedestrians on I-90. This is going to allow those bicycles and pedestrians to get around our work zone. So while everyone else is stuck in traffic, it will be smooth sailing across the lake for cyclists and pedestrians. If this all seems hard to remember, we have a fantastic new website. Uh, just go to the main DOT homepage, search for 2009 construction, and it'll take you here. A web page full of what's happening right now, what's going to happen next week, and what's going to happen next month. So if you're planning your commute for tomorrow, click on what's happening right now. We'll tell you what's going to be happening tonight, tomorrow, what could be going on right now. What are the traffic conditions looking like right now? Do we have any... Uh, collisions or stalls and the alternate routes you're thinking of taking, uh, that information is going to be located here. Interested in planning for next week, you've got relatives coming into town, what's going to be closed? Uh, we have a nice little web page called the Construction Update Report that tells you precisely that. Choose your highway, find your route, check it all the way through. You can find out what's going on on I-5 between uh, Pierce and Whatcom counties. So quite a bit of information there for you. Our web page has a, a fantastic new tool called Reinvent Your Commute. Uh, you can check out uh, how to join a carpool or van pool, uh, find out the latest bus schedules, and geez, where, do these, where is this bus going to take me? I've never ridden the bus before. And, and find some uh, other options like, like teleworking. How does that actually work? This page will walk you through step by step. So uh, in the middle of these I-90 closures, when things are very challenging, you'll have some options and uh, ways to avoid the, uh, the congestion caused by this construction. I'm standing here in the WashDOT Traffic Command Center where we have over 400 cameras throughout the Puget Sound region to keep an eye on your commute. During the I-90 closure, well, it's going to be challenging, but we're going to be in this right with you. We're going to have extra engineering staff 
watching those commutes from beginning to end, morning and afternoon, posting those changes or any collisions that may affect alternate routes to those variable message boards above the highway that you rely on while you're on the road. Additionally, we'll have extra communication staff on hand. What do they do? They provide the latest and greatest travel information to the media. So if you haven't left your house yet, you're trying to plan, stagger your commute, work from home, whatever, you're going to have the latest and greatest traffic information in hand before you leave the house. Um, it's not going to be easy, but we're going to walk you through step by step.